is you, you say that there's not you can't really point to any uh, responsible person or a responsible group, but the logic that you mentioned is there a source for that? How would you I mean what drives the system to grow in the direction that it does? Is that just yeah. random or is there some kind of like ideology it might be an old-fashioned word to call, but a, a, a meme or an or right. how does that grow in that? Direction? Well, I think there are two elements. One is that what I call these uh, predatory formations, not a very gentle designation, you know, there's like a bit of a, a tension here. Uh, they are mixes of elements of accounting, elements of law, mm. brilliant algorithms that are designed, these amazing computer capabilities that are developed, you know, new types of software. That means you can hire anybody because the knowledge is in the software. And it's just a question, do you know how to deploy the software? Uh, you know, all of that creates a system that has a capacity for a kind of self-ordering. And so every now and then you hear, and they try to keep it very minimal, that a, a trading floor, like the New York Stock Exchange, mm -hmm. closes down suddenly in the middle of trading for an hour. Why? Because the system has gone out of control. So, you know, it's not the case that the top people, like in the traditional corporation, they had the inside knowledge about how their stuff worked, which they mm -hmm. kept from different people so that they could keep. It's not the case. You know, those people at the top often really, they depend on the knowledge of the physicists right. for the algorithms, on the knowledge of the, the software people for that, etc. Mm -hmm. So it is sort of an interesting animal, you know. Um, I think I think to move to another phase where we don't have this capture and, and what you were just describing, I should actually complete my answer to get at your question. So what you really have is, is layer after layer of knowledge, specialized knowledge. And, and it's amazing how well it has worked. Because I swear, if it were in a university or in a government office, there would have been breakdown, you know. But here there is such, uh, there are also layers and layers of surveillance making sure that everything is working because, you know, it's... And still then we have glitches, but, you know. Um, so, so I don't know how you begin to dismantle this. Many of these traders, not traitors, huh? traders, right. <laughs> are... Uh, they don't need all the money they make. Some of them actually say that. They say, you know, I really, I don't need this. I mean, they can't away, believe but... how much money they, they could give it away, sure. Maybe many do, I don't know that. But, um, but the system works that way. So the logic right now is considerable capture at the top. Well, capture at the top disables gradually a more distributed economy where little monies, little consumers, little matter and collectively can actually reach an order of magnitude that is worth, you know, considering. Mm -hmm. And so there is a kind of destructive element in there. Right now we have a situation, it just has sort of come out into the open because a report was produced, you know, etc., sort of analyzing. It's not circulating widely, you know, you have to own the report to, to read it, so to speak. But, but. Um, a lot of the banks at the top, the big financial firms, basically, you know, not, not traditional banks, they are sitting on a lot of money that they do not know what to do with. They have exhausted their, you know, invading sectors to financialize, like the subprime mortgage was probably the big last call. Very, very modest, modest little houses, where the challenge was, how do I de-link the modest value, how do I camouflage? Yeah. the modest value of this asset and do something that is of interest, so mixing it up with high-grade debt, basically, right? And and uh, that was sort of the last big hurrah for them. Now, the, the instrument is traveling now, and so Germany has now foreclosures okay. and etc. Um, and it will move to, to India and to China. It gets really dangerous there, but that's like a slightly other zone. Huh? So... The West is more interested, the dominant, in what's happening in European space, in their domains, you know, their... And, and so I think that there is a kind of style. So they're sitting on that money. They don't know what to do with it. Interesting point. I like to juxtapose it like, 
We know in the United States, according to one estimate, 6,000 bridges, according to another, 15,000 bridges. We know they're going to fall. We know that they're going to kill people, destroy property, cars, you know, etc. But, I quote, in quotation marks, literally, there is no money to take care of that. At the same time, we know that there's all that cash that they don't know what to do with. So the challenge is, how do we bring those two together? The, the logic of that system is not to move in that direction. The logic of our executive branch of governments and our legislators mostly, the legislators can change, like a Green Party can make a lot of difference. The logic of this is not to go help. You know, we'll show you what we can do with your cash. So there are these two, these are divergences, eh? mm. very divergent logics that mark this particular period. The challenge is going to be, you know, how do we get it together? The environmental question could be a potential link, mm. but the environmental question, the way it is being presented is basically uh, text, rather than using scientific knowledge, rather than using digital technology to make things, extraordinary things happen. That is not really happening. It's happening through small efforts, but not at the level of big governments and big corporations. But I think the environmental challenge could be one place where all that cash that is sitting could start working. And still, I mean, the challenge then is how do you design a profit? Because the profit that is going to be designed that way has nothing to do with the hyper profits that they have seen in finance. But that cycle, they have exploited that. And, and as I always say, you know, nobody can really govern high finance. Neither can high finance govern itself. So it always goes too far and it's on the other side of the curve. That's where it is now. And that other side of the curve is an interesting point. When the state says we cannot fix these bridges, they're all also on the other side of the curve. Do those two other sides of the curve, can we bring them together, you know? Are they so far out in sort of a not a desirable position, that they might actually begin to communicate. What do you think? <laughs> okay, that's it. You mentioned in your book, um, as you know, a certain form of technology, you could say, um, the trading of carbon uh, uh, assets and, and, and uh, receipts for that. And, and But you don't really like It's not the, the way it. to... Well, like is not the word. I think... I think... It's been a natural experiment, if you want. Mm -hmm. We have been debating it for quite a bit. There is more agreement, sure. It's a, if we can implement the policy, great. Right. But it's clearly not going to take us very far. So okay. I think I, I looked, I have one of the graphs in the book where I look, you know, if we implement it all, this comes, by the way, from scientific documents. I didn't do those measures. Huh? So I show about eight different measures that the scientists have produced. And they have little differences, but they all go in the same direction. Mm -hmm. It's bad. Yeah. <laughs> If we implemented all the policies that we now have on the books that people have more or less agreed with, it would make a very little difference. It would be a little bit better. And we would notice it, especially in rich places, like New York City has good air now, you know. Right. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Locally. Uh, right. Locally. It's very difficult to change those systems uh, exactly. by design. And so I, I think that what we need to begin to do is to, to go on a totally different level, which is I have you know a, a set of little examples that I love mentioning, but it means using in a synthetic way, you know, a sort of abstract way of putting it. It means using biospheric capacities. Can you give one example? Where we now use. Uh, synthetic stuff that is very destructive. Plastic is a great example. Plastic in all its forms, not just plastic bags, but we use plastic in a lot of, we don't even realize, and it's just not biodegradable. So there's one of my favorite examples is a, is a bacterium that was discovered. The bacterium was not discovered, but it was discovered that the bacterium had a particular uh, good uh, capability. And it was at the University of Copenhagen. And um, so if you put it in brown organic waters, which is what we produce in kitchens and restaurants, mm. which is a problem of disposal for all cities, you know, mm. big and small, yeah. which is costly, which is a burden, which is done incorrectly more often than not. Uh, so more destructive still of the environment. But if you put that, that, that bacterium in those organic waters, it over time produces a molecule of plastic resistant 
durable, but biodegradable. But now, that it. is a radical recoding of a negative present in every human settlement, but certainly in the big cities, into a positive. So suddenly what we see as a burden becomes the source for something that we need desperately, but we must make biodegradable. So that is to me a great example. That, and that, that sounds can, a bit like you, you, you hope technology might be the factor that can make these changes in the system. More. Well, what, actually what we're finding is that there are a lot of biospheric capacities. You know, there's a long list. I would say that the bacteria, the algae and the mushrooms are right now the stars of the show. But to, you know, the, the biosphere has her own temporality. <laughs> it moves slower than we do. And it moves slower than our urgent needs. So I, what, what I find, like we know that algae is the best way to clean up a big body of water. But you know, she takes her time, the biosphere. And so what they do, you have, you have to bring in technical capacities, you know, to activate, etc. So the technological question hangs in there. It's, so that is why I insist this is not a return to nature, whatever that means. This is delegating to the biosphere part of the work. Okay. And then bringing in some of the innovations that we have developed in technology, you know. And, and so it's, a, it's not a romantic notion of return to nature, which I don't buy for a second, frankly. Right. And we have, moreover, it is truly the Anthropocene. We have reshaped, you know, that land, that water. Yeah, that, <laughs> that was a chapter that I really... Yeah. So, 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 so the technological aspect, you know, is very important. I mean, I think that a lot of the technologies that we have been discovered are really some of the most interesting and valuable things that we have, you know, generated. And I also think that the space of the city, the, the image that I have is every surface in a city should be worked. You know, when we go rush our traffic, run to the train station, we produce vast amounts of energy. Have embedded voltaics or other cap capacities that allow you to capture that energy. Every street that is standing there empty should be embedded with voltaics, capture energy. I mean, this is one example. Um, this bacterium that you can put, it's like a paint on concrete. Any concrete, ceiling, wall, sidewalks, that begins to seal off the surface, keep out greenhouse gases, and eventually produces actually sort of a purifying of the air immediately around it. Mind you, it takes a bit of time. Eh? That means that you recode something that is a negative. You know, buildings are the main producers of greenhouse gases, not cars. You know, except maybe in China it's cars. I don't know that. But, but so, so <clears throat> there are so many <coughs> forms of knowledge. How, how will this, this uh, <coughs> technological innovation reshape the world of finance, for example, which seems in your book... One well, of the they'll probably problems. enter into it and try to financialize it. But now, right now, finance is moving to a stage where it has overdone it. Right, now, now make it useful again. So, so maybe it then becomes interested in some new things. I mean, it has really financialized a lot. Huh? Okay. So it is ready for all kinds of new innovations. Right, so that's that's that, 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 <laughs> And so I always say, you know, let's grab it when it starts on the curve and we materialize it into something productive, you know, because finance has a capacity to make capital that traditional banking doesn't have. So let's bring it down and materialize it, but that's the challenge. The challenge is how do we bring it down? Because the returns are going to be small. But, you know, we need social housing, we need green transport systems, we need to build those 15,000 bridges in the United States and in a few other parts of the world. We need a lot. We need to clean toxic dumps. There is a vast, long list of stuff that we could be doing right now that we're not.